Hello and welcome to the second video. In this video we're gonna create a player, we're gonna draw him, we're gonna change the background color, and we're gonna make him be able to jump from the ground. So let's get started. Now we're gonna try and create our, create our player. We're creating a new bitmap called, called player BMP. But I'm gonna create a private list called player from the new array list. As I said before, this will make me be able to have more than one player on the screen and it will be much easier to add a player. I'm going to type new player. We're going to put in the... Just going to change that to player BMP. So, and now we're going to try and initiate our BMP variable. I am just checking in another file to see if another project that I had done before to see if I can have done something wrong. Whenever I need help with something I already have done, I'm gonna go and check this file. What we do here is we're just gonna get a bitmap file or variable bitmap, player bitmap. The variable would be r dot drawable dot player. Now we're gonna create our player bitmap really really fast. I'm just gonna warn you, I'm a very very good artist. So we'll not be able to achieve the professional results as I have done. We're gonna set the pixel value to 32 x 32. We're just gonna create a really fast player. Later we're gonna animate it with a sprite sheet. So the player actually looks like he's running or dying or falling, etc. So we're just gonna go with a simple stickman. There we go, we're gonna save it in our folder, Endless Running Game, which I missed. The address folder and the drawable medium DPI. Now we have our player bitmap and we're gonna try and run the project soon. I have put the initiation variables in the wrong parts, it's gonna be about the end of the code. And here we're gonna call the player that under our method. But we can do it that way since we have an array list, so we're gonna call four player play play player. Yeah, four player player basically. Four player player, All right? And the semicolon should be after the player. And inside here, we're gonna call the method on draw for the player. And if we had more players, this would players this would make sure that every player called this event.
and we're gonna draw it in the canvas. Now we forgot to put public void. There's a simple error that is quick to fix. There we go. Now it's just gonna take some time to actually start up the emulator. But I'm gonna cut the video a bit soon. I forgot to actually create the game view in the in this running game activity. We're just gonna do that fast by new game view. Now the game is gonna run, hopefully. But everything is pitch back. So I'm so smart that I made a black sprite for black background so you cannot even see the player. So I'm gonna change that by making the background to a bluish color. On a canvas to draw color. Can we call it color blue, maybe? Just gonna import the color class and hopefully we will see our player now. Yep, it's light blue. Go. But we made an error in our, our code of the player. As you see, the player started in the position Y, canvas at yet, hide something, something. And that is because we check, we check if if the Y is less than the game you'd get tight, which means if he has above the ground, we're setting the lead speed to zero and setting his Y position. But it's gonna be if his white position is more than the ground, then it's gonna be we're gonna change his white position. So we just change the less than to to the greater than if in this statement to the less than. So as you can see now the player simply falls. So as you see he cannot jump when he fell to the ground, jumped up again, so we're gonna try and fix that. By checking that if the v-speed plus the y equals to more than the ground, we're gonna set him so he lands on the ground immediately. So he doesn't fall down from the ground and then go up again. You see, it's just some simple math. Not really hard. We're gonna try and run it and see if Hey, it actually worked with this 
And now I'm gonna try and call the event when the player actually presses the screen, so we can make him jump. It's called motion event. Now I'm just gonna go and check how I actually did this in other projects. Uh, untouch event, motion event, event, okay. Motion event, event. And then four player, pick player. Now we're just going to make sure that every player object calls their jump method. I'm going to set the jump power to 10. Minus 10, I mean. If you had 10, you would set it to equal down again, and we don't want that. He's awesome. And he can jump everywhere. Well, at least he can jump. It's because we had the wrong, we had less than instead of the greater than. So hopefully everything's gonna work now. So we can't jump in there. I'm trying to press now, nothing happens. Now, jumps. Jump! That was all for this video, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, please subscribe, like and leave a comment below. Feedback is always welcome. In the next tutorial, we're gonna create a shuriken and we're gonna make it rotate around itself. So stay tuned for the next video within the next few days.